Uh, does anybody recognize this sound? Oh, well, that didn't work. Nope. <laughs> uh, anyway, it was the dial-up sound. That was, it was meant to be just eight seconds of that. <laughs> no, no, it was just that little bit, yeah. Uh, it wasn't that long ago that we would wait 26 seconds to connect to the internet. Once connected, we would wait another two minutes for a page to finish loading. How long do you think people wait now? Three seconds. With so much to do and so little time, we want it all now and we want it fast. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Chrissy DeVries and I'm a customer support engineer at Acquia, having previously worked as a web developer at an agency in Brisbane. In this presentation, I'd like to cover three points. First, uh, why image optimization is important and how it affects website performance. Um, secondly, the benefits developers and customers can gain. And finally, optimization tools and methods to get current sites performing better. Most people would probably agree that images are important for a website. Can you think about a time you last saw a website that didn't utilize images in some way? Whether it's banner images, visual cues such as icons, even the most minimal websites draw attraction because of their design. Coming from a background of front-end development, I personally trust a website with great design over one that does not. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, raise your hand if you've ever left a website that you didn't like the look of. Cool. And who here has ever left a website that took way too long to load? <laughs> Uh, according to some studies, 40% of users will abandon a website that takes more than three seconds to load. And I'm definitely one of them too. If I'm on a site that takes too long to load, or if I'm bombarded with too many like boxes for subscriptions, um, I'm not inclined to go somewhere else. Uh, but does it really matter if a site is too slow? According to the same studies, a one second delay in page responses can result in a 7% reduction in conversions. Uh, for Google, if their pages slow down by half a second, their traffic drops by 20%. For Amazon, if their pages slow down by one second, they could lose 1.6 billion per year. 52% uh, of online shoppers say page loading is important to their site loyalty. Uh, if you're online shopping and you're ready to pay, would you feel nervous if the process would take too long? Would it stop you from wanting to buy from that website again? 79% uh, of users will, are less likely to buy again if they are dissatisfied with the performance. Uh, perhaps that is because the average attention span of a human is now 8 seconds, declining from 12 seconds in the year 2000. Uh, this means that goldfish beat us by one second. Uh, so why is image optimization important and how does that affect performance? According to a 2016 report from the HTTP archive, images account for 65% of a web page weight. Thus, a lot of benefits can be made by focusing on image optimization. Uh, so we've established why it's important, but you may be thinking, what's in it for me? What benefits can you, your customers, uh, you and your customers gain with image optimization? Uh, for developers, when I was working at an agency, uh, a lot of my job was to actually take some images and then uh, resize them from the beginning. So doing that meant that later on in the process, I didn't actually have to lose time by having to do that again, uh, which also meant that I could also tell clients from the beginning on how to do that. Uh, uh, when you when you know you can optimize images that will help with a fast website, it also means that images do not get in the way of your workflow and you can focus on making a great website which has a great user experience. If your client's website has a great user experience and is performant, it means you'll have happy clients uh, who may be more inclined to recommend you to their friends. Uh, what are the benefits for clients? In my role at Acquia, we deal with around 5,000 tickets per month, and a fair few of these are about image performance, oh, sorry, and website performance. As I mentioned earlier, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, the faster a website is, the more your users will be engaged. Uh, 
we also send notices out to customers when they uh, reach their file size capacity. And whenever I'm looking at where the most of those files are, I tend to see quite a lot of images that are large because of PNGs or like 35 megabytes, which is not really great on a website. Uh, so rather than upsizing, to, they could, if they resize their images uh, and made them smaller, they wouldn't have to upsize, saving your customers money. Uh, and Google uses page load time as a factor in their ranking algorithm, thus having a fast loading website means you'll have a better ranking. Uh, what are some ways that image optimization can be achieved? There's three sections I'd like to talk about. Image formats, methods for optimizing images, and file management. Uh, personally, let's talk about image formats. This all depends on the image itself, but I tend to go for anything under 250 kilobytes. The lower that you can get it, the better. Uh, and the most common file formats are JPEGs, PNGs, and GIFs, or GIFs. I don't know how to say it properly. There's a bit of a war. <laughs> uh, in the future, it may be possible that none of these are actually in use anymore because with the growth of SVGs and WebP file formats. Uh, but I'm going to mainly talk about these file formats and what we can do now to optimize existing websites. Um, so which file format should you use? This does depend on the function, but in most cases I'd be recommending using JPEGs as it uses a complex compression algorithm and is the most common and recognizable format. Uh, considering how often we see PNGs are used in that graph from HTTP archive, there appears to be a misconception about what PNGs should be used for. As mentioned earlier at Acquia, I see a lot of images that are PNG files that are 35 megabytes, whereas PNGs should really only be used for logos or icons or things that are that need to be transparent uh, because it doesn't have the best compression uh, and always will end up being larger. Uh, and GIFs, I've not really ever seen them on any website apart from BuzzFeed, so I'm not really sure if there's any other use for that apart from in emails when you... <coughs> need to send something cool. Uh, now I'd like to talk about some tools and methods so that uh, we can use to achieve image optimization. Uh, since most websites will have banner images on the site, usually these are quite large, uh, but that doesn't mean that every image on the site needs to be that same size. And you also want to make sure that you're serving relevant content per device. Why should someone on a mobile be seeing something that's 1,200 pixels wide uh, that just weights their bandwidth and uh, makes it slow. So, and since mobile users exceed desktop users at 52%, it makes more sense to deliver <coughs> images appropriate to each device. Uh, one way of doing this is via the adaptive image module. Adaptive images and thus the module detects the device and then Drupal, using that module, it then rescales an image uh, on particular breakpoints so that you get served a smaller site, a smaller image if you're on a mobile and a larger image if you're on a retina display. It does use jQuery and JavaScript, uh, which means it only works if JavaScript is enabled on a user's browser. Uh, lazy loading is also another option, uh, which just, it only, uh, it won't load images that don't show up on the viewport. Uh, you can use this as a Drupal module, but I'd recommend using jQuery so as not to have too much module bloating. Uh, there's also resizing software. Uh, when I worked at the digital agency, uh, I would be, we, we had a lot of old clients that were asking us about website performance, so what I would normally do is I would take all their files and then upload it locally to my computer, and then I would use uh, Adobe Photoshop to do a batch resize fu function. So instead of just having to do that manually, uh, you can set a little record option and then you can make it uh, so that it goes through all these images and then closes them. So you can either resize it at 72 DPI or I would do a particular width so that I didn't have to waste too much time doing that. And then after that, I would then use uh, image optimization software to make that even smaller, uh, such as ImageOptim for Mac, uh, which also has a command line 
interface. Um, or for, there's also Casium and Kraken and Tiny PNG. Uh, and there's also some Drupal modules where you can optimize images as well. Oh, sorry. It keeps asking for a Wi-Fi. Uh, another thing that can degrade website performance is when there are too many files in one directory without any directory structure. Uh, having a good file structure means the server will spend less time looking for a file. Uh, at Acquia, we have found that over 2,500 files in any single directory can affect a server's performance. Uh, the best method would be to either use file feeds path, file entity paths, or tokens module. So you can set up that field to save to a particular directory, and using the tokens module, you can set that directory such as the year and the month. Uh, so whose role is it to optimize images? Well, I've mentioned that there are modules for Drupal that can optimize images. The one fallback for this is that it uses a lot of memory and can cause server problems. It is lighter on the server to do as much of this as possible before uploading it to Drupal. Uh, I believe that image optimization and management is a shared responsibility that exists for the whole life of a website. Do content editors know which image formats to use uh, and how big the images should be? Uh, the content editors of a site should know the benefits of optimizing images and having the tools necessary to achieve this. Uh, to conclude, we live in a world where there is plenty available to us and there's plenty of competition. We don't have the patience to wait anymore. If you're eating at a restaurant, uh, do you want your dinner as soon as possible. Would you go back if you had to wait too long? Uh, we want our websites to load as soon as possible so we can access great content faster. One way of improving the performance of your site is through image optimization. Uh, image optimization is best achieved if it's done through all stages of a web development cycle. From developers to clients to content editors, anyone who uploads images should have the knowledge and skills to resize and optimize those images. In a few years' time, we'll have faster internet with bigger data plans, our image formats will be new, our computers and mobile phones will have a higher pixel density, Maybe our attention spans will increase again. Uh, there is plenty of information available about image optimization, and my aim with this talk was to explain the benefits and its impact on web performance. Uh, what I've mentioned here is just some of the options, and I have compiled a document that I've found useful with some articles and tips, which I'll upload to the drupal.org website. And that's it. Thank you. Questions? I've got, I've, got for that. I've got two questions. One you mentioned the other um, optimization tools. Is there are they better than Photoshop? So for web or different? Uh like image like image optim, do you mean? Yeah. Uh, so there's generally I I end, end up using both because if you have a file that's thirty five megabytes uh, large, then if you use an image optimization for image optim doesn't actually do resizing. It just reduces some of the data in that actual JPEG file, so like metadata that you don't need. So. Yes. Yeah. And the other question is: Have you come across or settled on a false naming convention for optimal versions of images? Uh, yeah. 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 At that agency, and I tended to, depending on where the image was used from. So, if it was used on uh, an article about, uh, well, food, for example, <laughs> then I would I would probably be naming the yeah. Tr I'd try to name it with dashes in it, so like picture of uh, lasagna or so. But I haven't really seen a lot of that at Acquia. We we quite often I see, I just see files that have random numbers in them. So. <laughs> Yep. I've always just uploaded the bigger image I've got, you know, with a reason. Mm -hmm. So that image page you can handle the way it's displayed over time, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I think it's called Image Quick or something, which compresses the JPEG in the Google. I don't know if that's a Google module, it's called. Uh, I think there's 
a module, I think it's called Image Magic yes. and Image Image GD that do that. You choose if you know, do I compress the image one hundred or eighty percent or percent. That's a bit brutal that module. So that's the way I've always gone. So you would you suggest always optimizing it as much as you can in displaying the original image on the website as opposed to using image magic? Yes, yeah, I would definitely suggest that because again if you if you use those modules uh, the it puts impact on the service uh, which can result in in other kinds of problems as well and uh, not every site has will have that module uh, installed so I think if we can get to a point where we're doing that before all the images get to the actual site then that's probably better but if it was like a news article you going to someone's going to add one image Spread around in different places of different sizes like the thumbnail. Here are the You need to stick with that, wouldn't you? Yeah. Each cache and sort of image you need. Um, I would say you would be able to use both because I think with if you use Photoshop to resize an image and then save it for web, you've got you've if say if it's one image in your case, uh, you can kind of then control um, what, how, how it saves, whereas I, I'm not sure if you've really got that option with the module. It'll probably just save it at 70%. And some images look great at 70%. Some images look great if you save them at 30%. So sometimes there's a bit of a give take there where you can, uh, get an image smaller, whereas, uh, it's, yeah, it might not be possible to do that on every single image that you upload to a site. But I definitely do think that if we can do some of it before we upload it, and then in addition to that module, uh, then we can get even smaller file sizes. Yeah. You can't use, I've found you can't use that module, and uh, if you put an optimized image onto a website and use that image, you know, you can also Ah, okay. Um, I've not come across that, but I've also not really used that image GD module. I just know that it's... No worries. question because I guess I, I don't yeah because say if you've got the same image that's used in a few different locations it doesn't really make sense to upload that image four times so that it's within a particular directory so I would say it's if you have images that you know uh, are going to be global across other ones then you could maybe create a directory just for those images that you would use more often uh, yeah but that yeah um, I don't think as much as if there were lots of files in one directory. And just, sorry, uh, obviously we've been driven you've got the media model, mm -hmm. so in an ideal world you would upload your image, mm -hmm. you would name it correctly and you would maybe tag it depending on what the ABC had built for you. So if you upload an image of a plate of lasagna, you could tag it with a plate of food and lasagna, and then in future you could tell your content editors before you upload a new image, go have a look at the library, go search for it, see if it's there already. Mm -hmm. um, and so just passing back to your question as well, we actually just had this same problem literally a few weeks ago where the client came to us and was like, the, the images are too big, <coughs> make them smaller. So we made them smaller. Um, and then the original like, image. Yeah, the original image. And then they're like, oh, it looks shit. And we're like, well, like, what, what, what do you want us to do? So we have to find a happy medium between it looking crap and it working OK on Google. Because there was this whole Google page speed thing, take a consult, but, and we had to go through this process of any image that we could control, logos, uh, backgrounds, and anything non content related, we had to run through our image optimization. Um, and then some, sometimes they would say, oh, in actual fact, can we compromise on the size of this one to give it a bit better quality? 
and in actual fact that the home page of the website, um, they've, they've done their own image optimization um, rather than relying on the like slider. Yeah, in, exactly. In the home page hero image, it's the first image you see, and it looks awful. <laughs> and I've told them it looks awful, but it's like, oh, well, we need to speak for the home page. So, because they've got a gradient, and the gradient, you can literally see the lines. Mine's a really good image you want to portray, that I've got one of the low parts of mine. Uh, I've done my due diligence, I thought that was good. There's a responsibility, sorry, from the web designer's point of view where they have to understand the differences between whether or not an image is suitable for JPEG or whether or not the PNG needs to be 24-bit or 8-bit and understand the compression algorithms and, and understand what defines an 8-bit PNG. Um, and you can actually get better quality imagery um, at a lower file size where it's a really simple thing like maybe for instance you're uploading some simple black and white low fi wireframes that would actually be a lower file size or higher quality as a PNG that's 8-bit. Can I add to that as a photographer and all that stuff as well? Um, going back to the source of getting the original, so you only have one convert to JPEG because every time you convert to JPEG you lose quality. So going back to the original raw file if you can or the closest file you had to the original source give you a bit of volume when you cut down to the small size. Yeah? It's a little module called image crop. Doing an article, and you've got a nice picture that doesn't shrink down. For the summary, you can just pop it. Say one person's face or the front door of the building, put the little image in the summary, and then you don't have something squashed down in the room. Yeah, I've used that module before at my last job as well. I think um, you can also, with that module, set it that if uh, someone uploads an image that's too large, like a maximum of one megabyte, if they try to upload a 20 megabyte image, it's not gonna, it's not even gonna go through. It's gonna fail. So then there's also that that option that you could kind of guide them, saying no, don't upload a 20 megabyte image. Um, but then it, I guess it's quite, in some cases depending on the, the website, you may want to have an option to, people might want to see a really large image. Um, but I think, yeah, so, you, sorry. Are there any options for SVGs? Can you upload them and optimize them any further, or they just what they are? Um, I think you can, and I don't really know enough about SVGs at this stage to be able to fully answer that, because a lot of my... Like I'm a sport engineer now, and a lot of what we do is just seeing what what we see. And I haven't really seen a lot of that SVG stuff in the last year of working there. Um, so I would have to research that a little bit before being able to fully answer that. <laughs> you know, the best thing for SVGs is just algorithms. Yeah, 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 for sure, it's a vector. It's like, is that it? It's like you're watching it. That's it. You yeah, can't really. Yeah, it's I think there's a general model in the B that people I think it's like you can actually upload SVGs, I think. But it's got two major limitations that can't even drop out. So it's not ready for prime time, but it's. I was wondering, can you just upload a normal SVG with the normal image upload? What is the session for? What's the uh, no, it's that one? Uh, you can't can use it as a final one. Oh, not the image. And there's a security issue as well. Oh, really? Okay. So you need to do the trust of people that are voting for the SVGs. Yes. Okay, okay. yes, I see what you're saying. Yeah. 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 I was zero. I was going to have a session. Oh, sorry. Yes? From your personal experience, is there any recommended revolution of the image that you say? Say, because you have to cut that for the mobile first, which means if you want to use new lines, but there are also words you have to display that. So, how do you come to that? Um, I think I've always, my guidelines always been for banner images, I use 1280 pixels wide. Um, and then for any inline content, I either do 960 pixels or 800 pixels. Um, 
And then, but yeah, it's, it depends on the website itself, but I think those were always the kind of guidelines that I followed. Um, because it's, yeah, at the, at, you know, we do have really small screens and then really large screens. So it's really with that adaptive images is a, a good solution for that because then you can upload large images for people who are on retina and then smaller images for people who are on mobile. So again, actually, we had the exact same thing uh, a few weeks ago with a client. It's like that they tested it on a 4K monitor. It was like, why is the website not doing it? I'm like, are you serious? Um, and then the, the, the way we argued it is we went to the Google Analytics and was like, we will happily fix it, right? We, will, we can fix it. There's, there's ways to fix it. We, we can spend the time to fix it. But do you really want to spend the money fixing it for 0.1% of your users? At which point, obviously, they're like, yeah, okay, now we can. Like, we, we come at it from a, from a research perspective. If, if 90% of the users are 1920, then okay, we need to account for 1920. Uh, a website will do obviously 70% of their users are on mobile, so we focus all of the optimization there. And then obviously the website and our desktop is really good, but when they're like, oh, why isn't it why? I'm like, ah, oh, 70% of the users are on mobile, but oh, that's something we get which could change in the future too. Like that's what it is like now, but the, the internet changes quite quickly. So it might be possible that we'll have to change that approach uh, when the time comes that that's the retinas are more common. <laughs> yeah. Did Drupal A introduce any um, changes to um, like image uh, optimization, like internally, like for um, responsive devices, like the mobile phones and stuff like that? So one of the models I think you mentioned, I looked them up and it was like I'm sort of D7 oriented, where I'm just wondering if there have been any advances in that space. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I think there is one module, because I, uh, I was just reading an article the other day on Drupal.org about responsive images, uh, and it did say Drupal 7 and 8, but I would need to look that up, so I'm not quite sure, sorry. <laughs> It uses image page, so you basically, when you add a new image, you can display it and say, when this image is on mobile, display it large or, or medium, and then you display it on a desktop large, and then you, you know, uh, I don't five miles where it's extra large, and then just use the image cache. But that's not quite the way you would go. <coughs> If you printed a 72 DPI image that looks good on a Mac, it's gonna be it's not gonna look good if you blow it up on a on a canvas, which is why I always wanna when you're printing images, you wanna have the highest DPI possible. So you wouldn't upload it, you wouldn't save your JPEG at 96 DPI. Ah uh, no, I always use so 70. Used 
It was also that one of that method that I was using was also just something like a, a quick way to resize lots of images because we there would be like hundreds of files. So instead of going, oh, they, they're all different sizes, so I, I could make them all 800 pixels, but then some of them might still be larger than other ones because of their DPI. So then uh, I would just make a judgment call, say, okay, these images need to be smaller because they're only used for inline images, not for banners. So I'm just going to set them all as 72 DPI, which means some of them might be 400 pixels, some of them might be 900 pixels. So that was kind of a, a quick way to get all those images at a, a relatively smaller size, but still okay for web. Um, which, yeah, which helped on when you've got to resize lots of images. Cool. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, would you recommend Adobe Fireworks to optimize images in any way? Uh, I've never used Fireworks. Um, I didn't know that they there was an option for that. I've always just used Photoshop. Um, and I'm aware that not everyone does have Photoshop, which is I th think why GIMP doesn't. There's a lot of online uh, editors that can do the same, uh, which I'll add to that uh, document that I'll add to the drupal.org website. Which one, sorry? Oh, okay. Ah. Cool. Yep. Um, it's, it's got a situation where you can optimize an image, although you know, it's set to take the you use on the site to get around that. I mean, things like the aggressive JPEGs, which are the other tools to do what? Sorry? Like the aggressive JPEGs, so that you render the image in stages rather than trying to do that. So, maybe we can request it. You would repeat the question. I'll repeat the question. So, are there other methods for uh, being able to do progressive images? Is there modules available? Um, I'm just trying to think. Sorry. Because at this stage, I'm not really sure if there's a module for that for Drupal. Um, but I can look that up and also put it in the document for you. Cool. <laughs> cool. Thank you. <laughs>